Okay, friends, one quick, and I'll ask people who have seen this case, especially Dr. Kapoor, not to say anything and not to venture into diagnosis. 46-year-old male presented to Ecolab with a history of burning epigastric. Reason? Giddiness on exertion with tendency to fall. The symptomatology relieves with risk. Non-hypertensive, non-diabetic, non-smoker, vegetarian with no alcoholic habits. No history of hypertension, diabetes or a coronary artery disease. There is no history of family history which is significant. BP is normal, ECG is normal, XHS is normal and clinical examination is nothing significant. Fortunately, unfortunately, last four echoes done, they were normal. And here is the ECG for this particular patient, Mr. Servjit Singh, almost 46 years of male, and which appears to be reasonably normal with a like damping effect. Resting echo done showed normal. He was just referred to an echo lab of our center where we utilize a digital stress echocardiography. This is a quadruple screen display with a digital archival system. I am going to show you the images, before images. We subjected this patient in a bruise protocol lasting for 8 minutes 18 seconds and achieved a heart rate of 134 against a target heart rate of 174 which contributes to almost 77 percent of a target heart rate. Then exercise was stopped because he developed giddiness and an epigastric pain. And here is my echo images for this patient. Apical four chamber view. Dr. Gupta, if everything was normal, why was she evaluated? Pardon? If everything was normal, why she was evaluated? What was the problem? His problem with epigastric pain while on walking and a history of symptomatology okay. of okay. a gitteris okay. on exertion. Four chamber view. Two chamber view and a three chamber view. I will go back and show you again the same images. Four chamber view, two chamber view and a three chamber view. I think the right ventricle is something abnormal, epithelial portion. This is a stress image of a peak stress period. Right ventricle apex is normal or abnormal? Abnormal. This particular part which is yes. absolutely normal. How many if you go with us? Dr. Vijayalakshmi's image that right ventricular apex is normal or abnormal? Ab abnormal. This is normal or abnormal? This appears to be reasonably normal. LV, a two chamber view and a three chamber view. My question to the audience, not on a dais people sitting over here, because they always confuse you by showing CT, MRI and other investigations. <laughs> My question to the audience, is this positive or negative? Let's raise a hand for positive. One, is a quarter. No, when a hypotension occurs on stress, that itself could be a... There is no hypotension which hap happened with the stress. But you said she had... Uh, I said there was a, he exercised, developed Giddiness and epigastric pain and why which was stopped. Anybody who says it's positive? No. It's positive. One. It's positive. Anybody says it's negative? So many people say it's negative. So first of all, let me ask a person who says it's positive. Please get up and say why it's positive. Because you never show a negative why it's positive? Okay. Why it's negative, Dr. Khanna? I don't see any wall motion Exactly. There is no wall motion abnormality in echocardiography. And that's what all of us realizes. Echo is a supreme modality for evaluation of a coronary artery disease. And that's why it's negative. So in consensus, I take that this test is negative. But would you like to ask me something more? Before you say positive or negative. The guy has developed a giddiness. The guy has developed a pain in the epigastric region. Would you like to ask something more? Any other symptomatology? Any fall of blood pressure? Any fall of pulse? Any ECG changes? The fall of blood pressure has to be asked for. There is no fall of blood pressure. Uh, was there any change in the rate of the heart rate or bready or... Uh, bready cardia did happen at the peak stage. Now that is abnormal because as the exercise continues, the heart rate has to increase along with what the What does exercise. it mean by? 
it indicates ischemia, it especially in the inferior portion where the parasympathetic well, innervation is Well, till date, we always have been saying stress echo, if it shows abnormal, it is positive. That's what we mean to say is, let me show you ECG first, then I'll get on to heart rate. Here's a resting ECG, supine, pre-test, 97 beats per minute, 100 by 80, 110 by 80 blood pressure. Here's a peak stress exercise. Look at the ECG. Do you find anything abnormal in this ECG? Yeah, there is a astia, a pride is there. A stia elevation is there in the inferior leads. My see, uh, elevation yeah. in v lead 2. Lead 2 and lead 3, three. also. Lead 3, okay. And there they is a ST depression in 1 and AVL, high lateral Okay, leads. what else? It's a low uh, volume. The most also important you, thing is, look at see. the positive wave yeah. in V1. V1 and V2 also. Maybe in V2 also. All right, and this is on recovery. Now the question is: Is it positive or negative? It's positive. It's positive. Positive for what? Positive for uh, ischemia. Ischemia. Which ischemia? Inferior wall. Inferior wall. Inferior ischemia. and posterior wall also. And posterior wall ischemia also. Okay. Now let me go back to your echo images again. When everybody said it's normal, except for one. A dedicated echocardiologist said. Look at these images. This is a peak stress echo at 122 minutes, 21 seconds. This is a peak stress echo image at 122 and 35 seconds. And look, this is a typical hypokinesis of right ventricular yeah, impact. Yeah, very classical. And this did not happen during peak stress period. It happened, in fact, at recovery period. Oh. Even if the, uh, during recovery, if ECG changes or hypokinesia occurs, that has to be taken as positive. All yes, right. Yes. So, what we see, like I say, and one thing, let me show you the NGO images for this patient. Now, we say that this test is positive, and the NGO coronary angiogram, I'll straightway go to a right coronary angiogram. Wow. It's a hundred percent occlusion of the right coronary. The RV, uh, RV... Uh, In fact, RV branch is still is present. Still present, but still it is... As soon as we catheterize this patient, here is a coronary angiogram for this patient. And the bradycardia can be described with this because... Perfect. It, yeah. And this is a post angioplasty images. So my quest of presenting this particular patient was for something different reasons. 8 typical presentation for pain abdomen and giddiness. No significant wall motion abnormality during peak stress period. No significant ST depression, especially in ST elevation, seen in lead 2 AV1. V1 is very, very characteristic and moreover, we say stress echo is more important than CCCG. I don't agree all the times. ECG changes were seen much better than a wall motion abnormality. Again, an atypical presentation. Thank you very much for your patience here. Excellent uh, presentation. A very good presentation, so, Rakesh Gupta. Actually, the thing is that in patients with inferior wall ischemia, they the abdominal complaints mostly. And they are always mistaken for the abdominal uh, mass or any epigastric region. So that is the reason that uh, the this patient came with epigastric problem. And it is found to be inferior wall ischemia and inferior wall infarct. And one thing in the history people should remember is the pain, ischemic pain never goes below the umbilicus and above the upper jaw. And uh, anything that comes to the epigastric one has to look for the inferior wall or the posterior wall ischemia. And especially with bradycardia because that area is very rich in parasympathetic innervation the bradycardia with hypertension are most common in occurrence along with ischemia. Thank you very much, Dr. Rakesh Gupta. Please give him a big hand. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, ladies and gentlemen that brings us in, to the... In retrospect, yeah. would it have been advisable with this history that as soon as the peak stress occurred, do a subcostal examination to see a better RV or so? What exactly happened? We did not have a time. Yeah. We could not re record an image when his heart rate from 138 dropped to just 38. We had to put him back on a couch immediately. He collapsed on our treadmill basically. Yeah, when the bread and the hypertension occurs, that is a very bizarre Joris reflex. And at that time, everybody is interested in giving the IV fluids and resuscitating.
rather than uh, recording the echo. Okay. We've had very thought-provoking discussions. Thank you very much, Dr. Gupta and the members of the expert panel.